Hey guys, how's it going? Fred here, we're back from a with AF Math and Engineering and we are solving, we're in the middle of solving a bending moment diagram. And uh, this question, it's, it's a multi-part question. There's about six or seven questions that we're solving and it, this is just a series of videos. So if you haven't done the first videos, uh, go back, we'll put a link on the screen. Uh, just make sure that you're really confident with solving bending moment diagrams before we get to this point, okay? You know, I keep stressing the fact that if you make a small mistake somewhere along the line in your bending moment diagram, everything you do up to this point and past this point will be incorrect. So really, really go back, make sure that you can do every single book, bending moment diagram in your book that's given. You know, you don't make any mistakes at all because it's, guys, when I went to that, when I did this class in university and, you know, there were a lot of people who had nightmares and and, and failed the midterm just because they made a reaction mistake or something like that. So don't let that be you. With that being said, let's, uh, let's continue. We're going to solve the flexural stresses in the beam. Okay, so the flexural stresses in the beam are frequently also called the bending stress. Is It's, it's the stress in the material just before it yields in a flexural stress. And what that means, or how we're going to calculate that, is if you remember in the last video, we solved this cross section here Okay, the flexural stresses are going to occur at the, at the longest distance from the neutral axis, okay? And that's obviously going to be to the edges of the beam, whichever beam that we're, whether it be an I-beam or a channel or whatever. Okay, so this distance here is going to be the distance that we're going to measure the flexural stresses at. And in addition, we're going to measure the flexural stresses, stresses at the maximum moment, moment where the span, on the span, where the maximum moment occurs, okay? So with that being said, let's begin. So I've written this question out ahead of time because it's pretty, pretty quick and straightforward and we can just kind of motor through this part. Let's begin. So if you'll recall from the last question, we found a moment of inertia and I'm not gonna read that number, but you can read it there. And uh, we solved for the moment of inertia of this cross section, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna write that information down because we're gonna need that to solve the flexural stresses. As you can see, each part of this question is interconnected and each next question relies on the question before. So always be careful with your calculations, okay? We have a maximum resisting moment of 1,338.9 kilonewton meters. And if you'll recall, we got that. Let me just pull that up for you there. We got that from our bending moment diagram, okay? And that's the maximum moment on the bending moment diagram, okay? It can be positive or negative. All right, uh, you do have to take the sign with it. In some exam questions, your professor may ask you for the maximum top and bottom flexural stresses, okay? If they ask you for that, you need to do this step twice. And I'll explain what that means in a second. But currently, we're just going to find just the maximum top and bottom using this value. Okay, that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna solve the flexural stresses with just this moment, all right? So with that being said, let's take a look at the formula here, okay? This is our flexural stresses formula. Sigma equals negative MR Y bar over I, okay? Watch out for this negative, okay? Leave the negative in there and plug in everything with its, va with its, with its signs. And if you get a negative value, that's gonna be compression. And if you get a positive value at the end, that's gonna be tension, just standard sign convention. But leave that negative in there, okay? Otherwise, it gets quite confusing. Oh, let's begin. Let's take a look at the first flexural stress, okay? So, what have we done here? Pretty simple, we've plugged in the maximum resisting moment, okay, into the formula, and we've converted it to Newton millimeters, okay? And we did that by just multiplying by 10 to the six. We've left the negative in there, and because the moment was a positive on our moment diagram, we've left it as a positive, okay? Now, what's Y bar? Well, Y bar, and let me just pull this diagram up so you can see. Y bar is the distance since we're calculating sigma top, so we're calculating the top section of the beam from the neutral axis. Y bar is the distance from the neutral axis to the top of the beam where we're calculating the flexural stress, where the maximum flexural stress occurs, okay? And because we're going up towards the top of the beam, that's a positive Y bar, all right? And you'll see in the next one that going down is negative, okay? So the sign in front of this, Y bar here is going to be positive, and we're just gonna divide by, excuse me, sorry guys, 
and we're just going to divide by the moment of inertia, okay? And we are going to get a value of negative 835.56 megapascals, okay? Which implies that the top portion of the beam is in compression, okay? And we are going to write that as positive 835.56 megapascals compression. We're going to put the compression sign there. Don't put the compression sign here, okay? Because negative compression would imply that it's in tension, and we don't want to imply that because that would be incorrect. Moving on, let's check out the bottom half of the I-beam. Now I'll bring this back here. Same thing, same concept. This is going to be our Y-bar now, okay? From the neutral axis to the bottom of the beam. All right, the maximum resisting moment is gonna stay the same, okay? And we're, same thing, we're gonna multiply it by 10 to the six. We're gonna leave that negative in there, but now we have another negative sign, okay? And don't forget that. That's an easy little mistake, and just like that, you can, uh, you can get a zero on this question, which is not what we want. Okay, so we're gonna carry that negative over because we're going down on the cross section. We're dividing again by the moment of inertia and we are arriving at 1,229 megapascals, okay? That's a positive sign, the two negatives are canceling. So we have a tensional flexural stress on the bottom half of the cross section. And that's it, it's as simple as that. Stay tuned in the next video. We're going to show you how to draw these flexural stresses and we're gonna try and solve for the factor of safety of the beam and make sure that it's safe. Thanks for watching, guys.